This has to be the worst galactic challenge I have ever had the displeasure of playing. I hope you've got Inquisitors. We find ourselves on Takadana facing off against an awful round of Gungans. And you know what, CG? You know what? This is the real reason you introduced an Omicron for a, GA for a galactic challenge, isn't it? It's because you put it on the phalanx and made us fight it. It's horrendous. Oh my god, it's disgusting. There are benefits for Empire and it almost doesn't matter. There is the Safe Haven Global Modifier, which means the first person to attack or deal damage whilst there is no death mark on the field will get death mark. Because Jar Jar starts with death mark, when he takes a turn it doesn't get triggered until we've got rid of the death mark on him and then it's confusing, it's stupid. Imperial Edict, we do stuff and things. We've got, you know, extra max health and protection. Our leader, when he uses a special ability, we should all assist and stuff like that. But realistically speaking, it's just horrendous. It's just horrendous. The enemy has got this globe of peace, which is absolutely awful. And we need to win with the team of Empire. We need to attack out of turn 20 or more times. We need to win with an undersized squad in a horrendous match. I hate to say it, guys, but your options are this. Reaver Inquisitors or Lord Vader. I'm sorry. Let's do this. So with Reaver Inquisitors, because the enemy has got like 100% evasion on all of their characters at basically random times, I don't know why, it means we're going to miss. But thanks to GI's unique, if Inquisitors miss, they do true damage to the enemy in AoE. So every time we miss, this shield generator over here is going to take true damage. One, two, three, four, five times true damage. So whoop, there we go. We've just killed off 11 stacks off that uh, shield generator. Next up, I'm gonna use the AOE from Reaver, and that should finish off the shield generator. Wonderful, isn't it? Isn't it wonderful? Next up, we do want to go in on Jar Jar Bit. They all died. We'll just throw out an AOE, I guess, and strip away the turn meter on Boss Nass. Do another AOE, I guess. And then away we go. Now, that's not going to get us the attacks out of turn. You can get the attacks out of turn. Try not to be on the phalanx because you can't assist against him. But um, it can work. It, it also works underman. That's the beauty of it. We could get rid of Knight's sister and we could still get this underman done. It, it is a little bit of RNG. It shouldn't take you too long to get it done. You don't need to have Relic 9 Reaver like I've got. You just need to have these guys at like Relic 7 and you should be absolutely fine. So the same sort of principle. We get all that done. We do the stuff and the things. You need GI to survive. That's the only thing that really keeps this ball rolling. If you lose GI, it's kind of bad. It's kind of bad to lose GI. So it's not looking good right now. So if you lose GI, just back out. This, this is the RNG coming into play here, ladies and gentlemen. The RNG is a big thing on this. Because of the way Jar Jar's kit works with the bonus TM and the bonus turns, you can never truly, truly guarantee who's going to be taking turns. Um, sometimes one of them will take a turn, sometimes 1300 of them will take a turn. It's just, it's just kind of, see what I mean? Like now, for some reason, they're all dead. I don't, I don't get it. Nobody gets it. But as you can see, with Reaver Inquisitors, that was a misclick. With Reaver Inquisitors, you can get the Underman feat as well as Full Empire. Yes, it is horrendous, but it does work. <sighs> now, if you don't have Reaver, but you do have Inquisitors, it's not, not all is lost because we can essentially swap Reaver with Lord Vader. And I know that's probably a very little comfort to most of you. Um, because it's like, oh, don't worry, if you don't have... Lord, uh, if you don't have Reaver, you could just use the hardest GL in the game to go unlock. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So, yeah, we start off, we roll stuff out. We want to get the uh, death mark on our Vader. So, there we go. Vader gets death marked. We actually had a mass assist here. You might get the attacks out of turn on this one, maybe, potentially. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just do this AoE right now. Then I'm going to do more AoEs. For some reason, their boss Nass actually got death mark. I don't know why just happened like this is the buggiest G gc i've ever ever had the misplaisure of you uh, facing off against we'll do the aoe here to get the heals going and now we just need to try and actually win which can be surprisingly difficult can be surprisingly difficult let's keep on going if i if i could just get rid of that boss nas that would make me feel so much more comfortable about life the universe and everything um but ultimately we should also I love their evasions. 
Like, they just evade for no reason. Like, there's, I'm, I'm pretty sure there's nothing in their kit that lets them do that. Could be the Phalanx Army, actually. I think he gives them 100% evasion after the first time a unit dies. Maybe the Shield Generator counts as a unit in that respect. Um, so now we're stuck behind the Phalanx's Army. Uh, the Phalanx's Taunt, sorry. Uh, now I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to wait for a turn with Vader. He has hit Ultimate. So provided... Provided we can... Um, actually get a turn with Vader before we should be able to ult, gain a bunch of mastery, drop this, drop it like it's hot, and then go all after Jar Jar Binks. Hopefully without losing any other units. Roll it out. Should still be doing that true damage. Thankfully Lord Vader can't actually miss attacks, so when we hit people with him, he is actually going to hit them. They're not just going to evade. Alright. There we go. There we go. So yeah, Lord Vader lead with Inquisitors. You know, obviously, if you have Reaver, even better. You know, throw Reaver with Lord Vader, I'm sure you'll have a great time. But honestly, like, without those two, it gets very, very hairy. Um, so you, you might potentially be able to do that under man as well. You need to have GI. GI is absolutely imperative. Um, but let's, let's look at some other solutions. We still need to do the attacks out of turn. You can potentially get that with Lord Vader, but I find it's easier to do it with Mandos. So... We're going with Maul, we're going in with Gar Saxon and ISC, and once again, Lord Vader. I'm really sorry, guys. I wish I didn't have to do it this way. This can get you under mana and attacks out of turn. If you just want to get the attacks out of turn, throw in Candorous or Thrawn as the fifth, and it'll be fine. So I say that, it is still very RNG. We'll use an AoE here. This will get the death mark on both Boss Nass and Vader for some reason. I don't know why. We'll do the first special from Maul. Targeting Boss Nass, we want to try and get him deaded as soon as possible. Counter attacks, get rid of Boss Nass. He's gone. Amazing. Now I want to try and get um, buff immunity on Phalanx. So first special from Lord Vader. Nice, we got the buff immunity. So what we can do now is just focus on the shield generator. That He can't actually... Um, he can't taunt now, so we should be okay to just completely finish off there. Let's see. Let's get rid of the shield generator completely. And then all in on Jar Jar after this. We should be able to kill through Jar Jar pretty quick with this team. It's looking quite good there. I'm just going to guarantee that we can see him off. And then into Tarples. Tarples is gone. And then finish off the Boomadier. So this will get you Underman and attacks out of turn. If you're having trouble with this, throw in someone like Thrawn or throw in Kandras Ordo. And you should be able to finish it up. We can't assist against the Phalanx, I always forget about that. But, you know, between the rest of you, you should, should be able to just finish it off. Should be able to finish it off. So I'll just keep people nice and healthy. Build up to five stacks of Seething Rage on Maul. And we'll be laughing. We'll do one, and then that. They are just incredibly, incredibly tanky. All right, here we go. Just a basic. And a basic. See, see how chunky this guy is? Stupid phalanx with his army. Alright, we should be good now. We've got our five stacks of Seething Rage. There we go. Finish him off. Jobs are good. Un. So that'll get us attacks out of turn and underman as well. I really wish I had some better solutions for you here, guys. But I tried for a couple of hours and I, I just don't... I, I, I'm at a loss. I'm at a loss. Let me know how you got it done. If you did it without a GL, without Reaver or something like that, please let me know. I have a feeling that more Mandos might work, but there's, there's just so much RNG and I didn't want to bang my head or your head against the wall. Sometimes it's best to just settle for the two armies. Hopefully this was useful to you though. Please hit that like button. If you haven't already, please do subscribe. Huge shout out to my wonderful patrons. Thank you for being awesome. I'll see you all in the very next video. Peace out and may the force be with you.